Hello everyone. Well, the UK is two weeks into this period of not being allowed out and doing anything. We have one week to go, at least. Anyway, I've been keeping very amused doing some programming, porting bash scripts to Python. Uh, I don't know how I'm finding it so difficult, but I'll get there in the end. Anyway, I found a bit of time today to install the beta release of Kuban 2.2004, which is codenamed Focal Fosa. And this is onto my main system, full system install, uh, no going back. Well, I could go back, I did take a... I did take an image of KDE Neon before I installed this. Anyway, I've been finding a few glitches recently with KDE Neon, so why not give it a go? Can't be that bad, can it? Maybe it will be. So for once, the planets seem to have aligned. We have a very new release, a long-term support release of the Plasma 5.18 desktop. Going into the long-term support release of Kuban 2 2004. Amazing! What are the odds? It, they've actually finally done it. And it's a very recent release as well. I, mean, I only just upgraded to the 5.18.4 desktop in the last few days. So we're only one minor version away. Well, that's nothing the backports repo won't sort out. So we have Qt version 5.12.5 and the KDE apps 5.19.3. I think they were, but I will confirm that in the course of the video. We have the kernel version 5.4.0. I've not checked what is the recent version of that, but I hoped one item would work a bit better for my hardware. The webcam, Logitech Brio 4K webcam. Still not really working perfectly though. Not sure why, but I'll look at that in the future. So in the 5th of April, we are currently in the beta mandatory stage with the April 23rd being the final release. And in terms of the changes for the Kuban 2 beta, well, let's have a little look through. So yes, we have the 5.18 desktop. I'll mention a couple of changes with that, but I've done a whole video on it really, so I don't want to go too far into it. Yeah, the KDE apps 19.12.3, I guessed correctly, very good. Firefox 74's default browser, LibreOffice 6.4, provided if you do the full installation. I didn't, I did a minimal installation. Eliza is the default music player, which has replaced Cantata. I actually like Eliza. I didn't think I would take to it as well as I have done, but it does work very nicely in KDE. There's a couple more application updates. Plasma Wayland session, not even installed. <laughs> Do they have so little faith in it that it won't work that they just don't want to include it? And KDE 4 and Qt 4 support has been removed. I thought that was removed well, at least one version ago, back in 1910, might have been before that. There's there's a few known issues, although, yeah, I've come across a couple of different things, but nothing too major, really. I want to start with one positive mention, the theming of snap-based applications. Wow, it is so much better now. The mouse cursor is now matching the rest of the Plasma theme. I mean, literally, it's integrated to the point that I wouldn't know I was using a snap, and that is all I've ever really wanted. The performance doesn't seem too noticeable that I'm using a snap, really, that I, I can just pick it up, use it. It looks beautiful, it's matching the rest of the plasma theming. Wow. <laughs> like, that's great. I'm happy to use snaps now. Although it's not perfect. <laughs> There's always one application that doesn't work, isn't there? Well, one application so far that I've found. OBS. That's not a day-to-day -day usage for me. The fact Chromium and LibreOffice work is perfect. They're more of a day-to-day -day usage for me. The opening of system settings has been a little bit unstable. It sometimes got stuck open, but wouldn't show the application, so I had to go into KSysGuard. Or I suppose I could have done Terminal as well, but yeah, I just wanted to close the application down. So I did. So I force closed it here and yep, yeah, that was it. Was able to reopen the system settings after that. Oh, something I should try here is showing the GPU usage. That's a new feature that appeared in the 5.18 desktop. So what's using so much GPU usage here? Uh, Kwin, yeah, there's a, there's a surprise. Well, nothing else open that would be using it. Anyway, this is not meant to be a review. I was just having a little look around. Something I noticed that was missing is the K user feedback. Um, probably the less said about that, the better, but yeah, that would be under personalization and feedback. 
There is some other form of feedback included though, the diagnostics. So I can send error reports to Canonical, that was ticked by default, but I could untick it. So the privacy policy being used is Canonical's one, not KDE's privacy policy. So it's interesting the KUser feedback feature is removed or just not included. Anyway, what else have we got? Well, there's a new grid layout here on the theme downloader. That's a nice feature. There's an emoji selector. If you press Windows key and full stop, any emojis you select here will automatically be copied to the keyboard. And yeah, you can open an application. Well, let's say Kate and let's try and paste it in there. Oh, there's a new application icon for Kate. They wanted to make it look a bit more distinctive. Anyway, there you go. There's an emoji in Kate. Anyway, as I said, I don't want to make this a full review. This is just me messing around in the beta and other than the system settings not opening properly, I've not really found any other problems. One bug I do want to keep an eye on, which I was suffering in KD Neon, is the font sometimes skews here in the window title bar. When I was resizing the window, it would literally just change size according to the window, as if it was being stretched along with the application I'm looking at. I've not seen it yet in Kubuntu, but I might need to give that a bit more time. Anyway, that's a quick look at Kubuntu 2004 Beta. Thanks for watching. See you all later.